Switching gears from a startup to uh, one of the largest companies on the planet, uh, and in the interests of time and, uh, and also of keeping us remotely on schedule, which amazingly, we're only about 10 minutes behind. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you today from Google, Alexia Ariza Balaj, who's going to talk to us about search engines and optimization. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Alexia. Um, I'm a Google employee, which uh, we call us, you know, we call ourselves Googlers. Uh, so yeah, we are real people, sometimes traveling uh, around the UK in Wales. Uh, so thank you very much for inviting me to Digital 2015. Um, so I joined Google um, three years ago, three and a half years ago, um, as a manager for SMEs. So Google sees small businesses and startups as the future of growth. And my job is to help agencies who manage SMEs, uh, their marketing campaigns, to be successful, get more customers, get more leads. So I know that the purpose of this meeting is to, I've been asked to go through the basic of search, but I thought it would be more interesting to talk about how to get your site out there, the different sources of marketing, how, how people in the UK are searching, you know, what do they do, what are the tools, so it will help you have a little hit list and so how you can, how you can uh, deliver on those goals. So I will start with digital marketing. Um, very quickly into web design best practice, things that we've seen some large, from larger clients, um, things that work that will make you more conversions or more leads. So if you're a service-based company like, a, like a, a locksmith, how do you get leads? How do you get people uh, contacting you? Uh, Multi-screen word, it's something that is very important. Um, you know, how people search for things using the internet. Is it more on the desktop? Is it more on your mobile? Uh, and also the percentage of media spend. So, um, where, you know, it changed so much last the, four, four, the past four years. And we go really quickly on overviews Google AdWords. Um, so, digital marketing channels, a quick overview. So this was presented in the US uh, by web.com and I thought it was a really nice way of looking at things when you're a business owner. So you have present your business, engage with existing customers, and generate new leads. So present your business, it all starts with your website, or your shop, or both. Um, you have your mobile sites, you have your social media presence, video, sometimes, you, you know, sometimes businesses use a lot of video, a lot of how-to. And this is all part of presenting your business. Once you have everything in gear, it's about how you generate leads, how you get new customers through the door, uh, which can be done with display, SEO, PPC, or SEM. Still a bit of social, because you, now you have lots of paid uh, solutions, um, like Facebook and Twitter, for example, have a really good proposition. Can't believe that she said Facebook and Twitter, she works for Google. Um, and engage with existing customers, so social activity again, mobile apps if you have any, email marketing, which is a great source of engaging with existing customers. You wouldn't believe the number of small businesses that I meet, and they're like, how many emails do you have? 50,000, so what do you do with it? Nothing. Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's the hardest, to get the customers through the door once you have them, just to make sure that they, they, you know, they recognize you, that they engage again with you. So going back to present your business, um, what makes a great website? Um, very simple things like simple, clean, colorful, modern, friendly. Um, you know, actions, very prominent on the site. You know exactly the different sections. If you're a hairdresser, what makes a good website? Call to action. What do you want out of your site when you're a hairdresser? Bookings. So you need to make sure that you have a number that you can click and call, or a little engine that you can click and book your appointment. It's very simple, but it has to be very prominent in the site. If you don't show that, well, you know, people don't really know what to do when they go to your website. So the goal of your site has to be really, really clear. So this is a salon, again, to go back to the hairdresser, which is quite, a, it's a simple example that will resonate with everyone. This is a salon in Soho, and um, so they did something very personable. So, for example, they have, 
you know, their social media widgets on to see like, how people are following them and things like that. They also have very prominent book online colors, sign up for offers, and all the pictures in the center are a uh, hairstyle that they made at the salon and they took a picture of each client and they renew it, which is quite cool because it's a unique concept, which is going back to originality, what makes your business unique. And for them, it was really their, their unique style and the way that they present their work and they decided to use that on their site. So the do's on web designs have a clean, simple home page. Define the goal of your site. So do you want to sell something when you have a website? Do you want to showcase your portfolio? So if you're a photographer, maybe you want to use your website to show your portfolio. Um, do you want to generate new leads? So if you're a business, um, I don't know, in, in the, um, I don't know, you're a nurse and you want to get new leads, you're a maternity nurse, um, you know, uh, a midwife, um, you know, how do you get leads, get people to get in touch with you? You will have some testimonials. So the goal is to generate leads. Use great imagery of your work. Um, you know, uh, provide links to book or view services. There is no, I mean, if you see my surname, no one can say it. So if I have an email address that no one can click on it and I'm expecting a leads, I'm screwed. I mean, I can't get any leads. My name is too complicated. I know that you know you Welsh people have very complex names. I'm Basque, so I can you know I can take you on this. There's a Z, there's a K, there's an X. Um, <laughs> uh, make it easy to find phone number. So especially if you're service based, you want phone calls. If you're a locksmith, you don't really want people to stand hours on your site. You want people to pick up the phone and give you a buzz. If you're a plumber, same thing. You know, just say. Like, I don't want people to stay on my site. I want people to quickly find my phone number and give me a ring. Make it easy to find a phone number and mobile optimized. Because that's how, if businesses are very concerned about, you know, should I have a website that is mobile optimized? Should I invest? You know, the customer behavior is very, very clear. So businesses are still thinking about it, but customers, you can look at how you, as users, are looking for something. You check on your phone all the time. You wait for a friend in a cafe, you will check something on your phone. You have a conversation in a pub, you know, you go back home and you will check on your phone. Oh, you know, going to Jamaica sounds nice, you know, and you will check on your phone. So there is a clear behavior, not only in the UK, prominently in the UK, but globally about, you know, being present on mobile. So going back to site optimization, make it really clear. What is your goal? So is that e-commerce? So I go back to what, what, uh, what we said before. Go to Amazon. They have about 14 points of calls above the fold. If you don't know that you have to buy something, it's just that like you haven't looked properly. So it's very, very clear. Branding, um, so the key messages. If, if your site is about relationship building, um, lead generation, so you're looking for new prospects. Um, membership, support, or viral. You want to create a buzz, you have a video, and you want to drive traffic there. So the don'ts, clutter homepage, out of date and heavy upload of imagery. Something that I saw before was like a promotion that was for September, and I spoke to that business, oh, that's great, you have an offer for September. It was like, oh no, that was for September last year. So make sure that the site is up to date. Missing contact information and no clear call to action. People need to know what they are meant to do when they go to your site. Um, so that's an example. So for the neutrality, I took an example of a site in Australia uh, of the Doms. So, uh, you know, very cluttered um, text, big imagery, quite heavy banner. Uh, it's not because you like some kind of bubble letter that you need to put it on your site. That's also, you know, keep it clean, simple, um, elegant, and a heavy banner that is obviously made by copy and paste. Um, so we live in a new multi-screen world. That was in 1998. That was my phone when I was 18. I love that phone because you could buy all sorts of covers and have it in different color every day. It was fabulous. That was my phone. And that was Google in 1998 as well. Very different. Um, the name, do you know what is the name of Google when it was initially, uh, initially created? It's not Google. It, it was Backrub. That was the name of Google. Then they decided that it was a bad idea. Yeah, we all say that that's a bad idea. Um, so that's, that was Google in 1998. So. 
But welcome to 2015, so mobile exceed the desktop. So when you look at mobile presence in the UK in 2010, only 10%. You always have someone that says, oh, next year is the year of the mobile, and everybody would look at him and say, yeah, sure. 2013, 30%, and this year in the UK, 51% of searches are mobile. So you still have sectors that are very desktop heavy. So for example, um, in service, you have, you know, it's traditional, for example, um, I don't know, like a house extension, very desktop led because of the nature. You need to sit down, look at stuff, you know. That's not something that you look on a mobile necessarily, so the volume is more on mobile, but everything that is fashion, um, hotel, resort, travel in general, very travel heavy. On YouTube, for example, in travel, we see 51% growth on travel search squares year on year. Um, 74% of the UK consumers have a mobile, have a smartphone. But by, 19, by 2020, 90% of them will have, um, you know, smartphones. So at Google, we have something called nomophobia. So it's the fear of being with a mobile device, power source or service area. Uh, when we go for drinks at Google, we have a game, which is basically we bring a, a basket and uh, people have to put their phone and the first one that takes the phone during the drinks have to pay the round for everybody. So that's also a very good way to get around that. But, you know, all this smartphone usage is allowing you constant connectivity. So this is a split, and it's, it's global, it's fairly common. This is the split of the hours of the day, and these are the, you know, the different devices. So when you do marketing, you can also tailor your marketing through the device that people will search for your service. Context also drives the choice of device. So you wouldn't, you know, if you're on the go, if you're in a specific location, you will use a certain device. If you, if, if, you, if you are in the comfort of your own house, you will maybe use a tablet, watching TV, or a desktop. Um, if you're in, on your car, if you're waiting for a friend at a cafe, if you're at a shop, you will use your smartphone. This is the media habit. So now we talk about consumer habit. Let's look at media habits. So uh, daily time in 2010. Digital, 25%. TV, 47%. Radio, 22 Print, 6 This is last year. 43% of the time is spent on digital. TV, 38%. Radio, 16 Print, 4 um, If you're familiar with programs like Jimmy Fallon, The Tonight Show, or James Corden, Tonight Show, um, they, uh, they build content specifically for YouTube that, because they know that the show is seen, is seen on mobile device throughout, you know, around the world. So, so big advertisers or big programs as well are tailoring to match you know, the daily media time to catch a slice of them. So this is also something to think about when you want to market, when you want to spend advertising money and different solutions. So you see that the, the, the media, the time that you spend watching TV is reduced. Still prominent, but maybe it's not the best solution for you. Digital is where the time is spent, but maybe radio is cheaper sometimes and you're very local, so you know. But these are the things that you need to know to make your choice in terms of investing you know, pounds into a digital solution. So to sum up, we're always connected. 80% of people aged 80 to 29 own a smartphone. Search behavior is sometimes strange, but always true. Uh, it's not about the product, it's about the purpose. So, something really sad again, 51% of UK shoppers go online to compare product, price and feature while they're at the store. That I never understand. It's like you go to a shop and you check online the price and you compare like in the shop. Um, that's really funny. Um, also, location-based ads led to 32% to visit store and purchase 19% to make unplanned purchases. So if you have a shop and, it's, and you want to drive footfall, if you have local ads, you will, you will add a 32% incremental to drive footfall. So that's a good thing. Be, be noticeable on maps. Be available you know, using your mobile phone. So for example, if you're in Cardiff, you know that you have lots of tourists. And, you know, grab people when they are on site. 
that's a, that's a good one as well to have. Make sure that you have a call, click to call, the direction, the website, everything is in there. How can we help SMEs in the new multi-screen world? Um, first of all, Google sees SMEs as the growth engine of Google. So we pay extra attention. You will see a lot of seminars going around the UK to you know, help businesses being on digital um, you know, solutions, get the site ready. Um, we really see SMEs throughout the world as the growth engine. Um, so there's a simple way to think about this. You have to always be there, always relevant, and always optimized. So always there. You need to be found. So found using multiple products. Free, paid, the choice is yours, but make sure that you're found. Um, I used to manage uh, clients when I started at Google, uh, the reseller program, so I used to try and sell Steam. And, um, and when you talk to small businesses, sometimes they have like, yeah, but everybody knows Johnson's Plumbing. Uh, no, I don't. So sometimes people think that there is only one way to look for things, and it's their own. But for the same search, you will have a very different way of you know, using search. So YouTube, for example, um, I've been talking to um, not very glamorous, but funeral directors, and I say we have to stop with the video with the, the old people, which is quite offensive. So like, just do a cartoon to democratize you know, funeral directors. So, but this type of job use a lot of video, for example. Shopping, if you're an online store, uh, you use shopping to show your inventory, the same way that you would use eBay store, Amazon store. Display. Um, some advertisers really believe in display and they like display. Offers, Maps, um, and G+, or Facebook, or Twitter. On all devices, make sure that you're found across all devices. 50% plus of queries are mobile in certain vert vertical, as we said before at all times of the day. So if your business is very much, if you have a restaurant, make sure that you have your advertising is spent when actually people search for a restaurant. 19% uh, of online shopping takes place between 8 p.m. and midnight. Make sure that if you're a retailer and you only shop, well, you only um, um, sell online, make sure that your advertising gear is ready for people that are ready to buy online after 8 p.m. And 50% of online purchase take over 19 days. So make sure that you're found. 88% um, of AdWords click are incremental to organic clicks. So I have a lot of questions of uh, people using SEO and search. What is the benefit? Um, we see incremental. So we see incremental at 50% when you're above the fold and on first SEO. We see something like 70% when you're in the middle of the page and you're on your paid search results, and 88% when you're in the bottom of page one and on search. So that drives incremental. Um, always relevant. Relevant to intent. What is the intent in the search query when people search for things? You know, the difference between low APR, credit cards, and just regular branding messages. Relevant to device, make sure that you have the right text for the right device as well. Relevant to the time of the day, you know, lunch and dinner. Um, relevant to location, so, you know, near the shop, as well as, you know, um, the store locator to call get all the features in, and relevant to content. <coughs> relevant to individuals by demographic. Again, by interest. Relevant to individuals by interest. And always optimized. So connect with customers. Identify the types of conversion that work for your business. So do you want to drive calls to your business? Do you want people to go to find you on a map and go to your store? Do you sell anything online? And in that case, you want transactions. But just define that. So Google helps you complete the picture. So the three A, always there, always optimized, always relevant. So I've been asked to look through Google AdWords. So Google AdWords is nothing different than um, an advertising solution. So the same way that you would be on the paper and have you know, the title of your ad, the copy of your ad, and the different information, it's exactly the same format. So you create ads for your business. 
AdWords will display them to people searching for your products at the time that they look, at the time people are looking for them. So you can have the reach, you can have the relevance and the ROI because you're, you have a pay-per-click model that you're charged for any qualified leads. So this is how it works. And because we're funny people, uh, we put the example of garden gnomes, which is obviously an example from an engineer. Um, so the ROI, so before you even think about AdWords and how you do it, it would be about your objective. So if you want AdWords to be successful, you have to define the objective. What is your objective? What would you use it? If the objective is to build brand awareness, build awareness, educate prospects, so for example, you're Nike, you have this new watch for the marathon. You know, you want to create a buzz about it. It's not available out there, but you want to educate people on the benefit of it and why they would spend 250 pounds on it. Well, you will use AdWords to have qualified visits to a page to educate them. I had this kind of campaigns, for example, with the NHS. The NHS in certain regions of the UK are doing quit smoking campaigns and they want to educate people of that region of the different solutions. So they want to visit to the page that they built. So they want, you know, book an appointment, um, alternative uh, solutions that you can use, this kind of stuff. You could use AdWords if you want to generate leads, which is, the, I mean, which is um, very common for service-based companies. So for example, um, your hotel, uh, you have a new conference room service. Well, you want to have registrations. You want people to sign up to the newsletter. Or you have a new, I don't know, your loyalty package. You want people to sign up to something. And you would use that to generate a lead. If you're a plumber, you want, or a house renovation company, you, want, you do house extension, you want people to fill up a free quote form. Normally all quotes are free, but people love that. Free quotes, and that will give you a lead. So then as a business, you can come back to a customer, you have all the details, and get the conversation going. And if you're a retailer, or if you're an e-commerce site, and you only sell online, what you want from AdWords is transactions. That's very simple. But always keep in mind the objective and the success measurement. So if you can do it yourself, um, but if you want to work uh, with a trusted partner, so agencies can do it for you. Um, so we have a, a program that we call Google Partners. So they are trusted agencies across the UK. I'm working with one of them right now, which is Liberty Marketing. Uh, so they are Welsh agencies based in Cardiff. Um, that's why I'm here, because um, we work as a team. Um, so partners in the UK, so they have a badge. Um, they have a, a highest accolade from the partner agency. So, um, so it means that they, uh, they are certified. Uh, they have really bad, good practice um, and customer care um, metrics. So they can really help you. So that's in the, in, in the case that you don't want to do it at all. Uh, and you want someone to do it for you. Um, so Liberty Marketing is a Google partner. Um, free training and support, so I go there every quarter for training. They are all AdWords certified. Um, they have a vision of industry insights and new product updates, so they are invited to all events that we do with new products out there. A partner community to connect with other agencies as well, and they have a dedicated point of contact at Google. So if something is wrong, they will have someone on first line, which is, which is quite a good thing um, if you do AdWords yourself and you had a problem before. Um, so that's it. I think, I think that's all I have for you today. Um, so thank you very much for your time. And uh, I, I guess I'll see you around at the, conf uh, the conference. Thank you very much.